Well, shalom everyone and welcome to our Shabbat night service. It is Shabbat and February 23rd, 2024, and we are excited about the word that we will study on tonight and all that the Ruach HaKodesh will reveal to us through this word on tonight. So welcome, we say shalom to our Shabbat night service. We have this music playing in the background and it's, we don't own the rights to the music, we just use it to get our hearts and minds ready to receive all that Jehovah will reveal to us tonight through his word. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by his word. And we study line upon line and precept upon precept. So we are excited about our lesson for tonight. And we are excited and welcome you to join us on our journey through the Torah, the first five books of the Bible in one year. So let's listen to the music and just cast aside all the clutter and all of the things that will get in the way of us focusing on this word on tonight. Oh my goodness, that was an abrupt ending to that song. We're going to do one more. Give others a chance to join us. And then we will begin. Again, we don't own the rights to the music, but it certainly gets, gives us an opportunity to meditate on the word and get ready to receive from the Ruach Pradesh through this word on tonight. One more minute, letting others join us. Make sure that when you join, you mute yourself so we don't get that feedback.
Right. And we're going to end our session there. And once again, shalom. Welcome to our Shabbat night service. And so with that, we're going to pray and then get in our shared screen. We're going to be in lesson 20 of 52 lessons that will get us through, <laughs> excuse me, the first five books of the Bible in one year's time. So let us pray. Jehovah our Elohim, we bless you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice. We are glad in it. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and study and learn of your word. We thank you for the Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit that comes to guide us into all truth. We thank you for Yeshua HaMashiach who came and paid the price that these earthen vessels may be filled with your presence. These things we pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and we say amen. All right, get your Bibles ready. Even though I will show it on the screen, you would want to take notes and make notes for our lesson entitled Tetzave. Tetzave. And we are going to get into our shared screen and have that lesson before us on tonight. All right, let's get into our slideshow presentation. All right, so we are in our lesson 20 on tonight, Tet Zave. Tet Zave, which means command. A little bit different than most places where it would say, and Jehovah said to Moshe, speak to the children of Israel. But now he says a little stronger word, command. You will command the children of Israel. So now this is a stronger emphasis on doing exactly what Jehovah is commissioning the people of Israel to do. And it's in, found in Exodus chapter 27, verse 20, all the way to chapter 30, verse 10. And again, this is lesson 20 of 52 lessons that will get us through the first five books of the Bible in one year. So let's get ready for our introduction on tonight. In our last lesson, lesson 19, it was titled Teruma. Jehovah gave Moses the instructions for building the tabernacle and some of the furniture that was in the holy place which was called the Mishkan, or tabernacle. The Mishkan was surrounded by a courtyard, and we went over the dimensions of the courtyard, the height of the wall, and we found that in the courtyard was also the altar for the sacrifices. We went over the construction of the altar for the sacrifices, and Moses was going to receive a voluntary offering which is called Teruma. And it's interesting that when Jehovah gave that instruction to Moshe, this whole concept of a, an offering for me. Why? Because we were you going to build a tabernacle so that I may dwell with them. This week, we will study the making of the priestly clothing for Aaron and his sons and the ordination ceremony. Remember that before this ordination took place, that the firstborn of each family, male child of each family, was considered to be the one that would be the priest of that family. Because there will be the sin of the golden calf, then that was taken away, and Aaron, or Ahuron, and his sons became those of the, class, the uh, tribe of the Levites that became 
the priestly class. Jehovah tells Moshe that he is to make the garments just as he was shown. In other words, while Moshe was up on Mount Sinai speaking with Jehovah, he was shown in picture or some kind of view of what he was to make. And then the craftsmen for making the garments were given wisdom to do all that is required of them. So Moshe would give the instruction, but Jehovah had put in the minds of the craft people that were going to make all of these things exactly what they were to do. The study will conclude by describing the incense altar, which stood in the tabernacle or sanctuary in this holy place that was set apart for these items. Before we studied the menorah, we studied the table of showbread, and we studied the Ark of the Covenant. Now we're going to get into that another piece of furnishing that was inside the tabernacle, and that is the altar of incense as we close out our lesson. The priests were commanded to burn incense upon this altar daily. So the menorah, it Usually, we believe that it was designed to stay lit 24 hours a day. And then we believe that the incense would be burned and rekindled and rekindled to make certain that it burned and that aroma was in the holy place at all times. And so with that, we're going to get into our lesson on tonight in Exodus chapter 27 and verse 20. Now, don't think that, I mean, we get into reading this and we think, well, this is real boring and it, uh, why do we have to go? But it's important that we understand something as we're going through this, that Yeshua filled many of these Items that we're studying as he was considered a high priest, as specifically when he took his blood before the heavenly throne after his death on the cross and presented that blood before Jehovah our Father. And so by understanding this a little bit more, what this priest was required to do, we'll understand a little bit more of what Yeshua HaMashiach fulfilled when he walked this earth. Verse 20, you are to order or command. That's that word, Tetzave. The people of Israel to bring pure oil of pounded olives for the light and to keep a lamp burning continually. And so we believe that that particular word continually means at all times. Ahuron and his sons are to put it whenever, but let me specify that, whenever the tabernacle was constructed, because this Mishkan could be taken down. Now, once Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem, then the lamps would stay lit 24 hours a day, every day. But this is why the tabernacle was, in fact, assembled. Of course, when they were transporting these items, then it would not be lit. Aaron and his sons are to put it in the tent of meeting outside the curtain in front of the testimony. Remember in the Mishkan, there was the holy place where we had the table of showbread, the menorah, and we're going to add the altar of incense. Behind the curtain was the Ark of the Covenant, and inside of the Ark was uh, some manna later put in, along with the tablets of the Covenant.
This is the permanent regulation through all the generations of the people of Israel. So this is what would transpire inside the Mishkan or the tabernacle and later the temple as the children of Israel participated in providing a place where the spirit of Jehovah, our Elohim, would dwell among this people. Verse chapter 28, verse 1, you ought to summon your brother Aaron and his sons to come from among the people of Israel to you so that they can serve me as Kohanim or as priests. Aaron and his sons, Nadab, Avihu, Halazah, and Itamar, you ought to make for your brother Aaron garments set apart. That would be, in some languages, it's translations, it says holy for serving. That's what set apart is, holy for serving Elohim, expressing dignity and splendor. Speak to all the craftsmen to whom I have given the spirit of wisdom and have them make Ahuron's garments to set him apart for me. So Ahuron is going to be set apart even more than his sons so that he can serve me in the office of Kohen or priest. The garments they are to make are these. A breastplate, a ritual vest. And we see in this rendering here, I've tried to produce what Moshe was told to make in a rendering that most uh, scribes believe would be what this outfit for Ahuron, which was different from the, his sons. These outfits, this outfit was only for him. And it goes on to say, they are to make holy garments for your brother Ahuron and his sons so that he can serve me in the office of Kohen. We'll see these things continually mentioned and just to get a perspective of them is something that most of the church doesn't do because they don't go through the, these uh, chapters and verses on a continual basis to get a basic understanding of what this was that they were making and why they were making it. That he was told to use gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen. So that was all uh, the, the, the yarn and the gold were woven together, and then they were going to have this fine linen that they had taken from the people in Egypt. They are to make the ritual vest of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. You see that uh, vest right there. And a finely woven linen crafted by a skilled artisan. Attached to its front and back edges are to be two shoulder pieces. So up on the shoulders, there was a cord coming down that would hold the ephod. And this cord would come down and attach itself there underneath and over the shoulders so that this breastplate would be considered over the heart of Ahuron. They are to make the ritual vest of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and of finely woven linen crafted by a skilled artisan. Verse 7, attached to its front and back edges are to be two shoulder pieces that can be fastened together. Its decorated belt is to be of the same workmanship and materials, gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely woven linen. And you see that belt around the waist right there. This would be similar to a woman's apron. You know, that apron that she would put over and then put around her waist. This was very similar. Uh, that apron was very similar to what was made here. Then he goes on to say, verse 9, take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel. In some translations, it says onyx stones. But in actuality, that is a name that they put there because the, the stones that were 
that they were told to use didn't understand really what those stones were at a much later date. At the time Moshe gave the instructions, they knew because they had the stone. But later, those stones were not sure exactly what they were. Six of their names on the one stone on the one shoulder and the six remaining names on the other in the order of their birth. And so there's twice this is going to be mentioned in the stones that were on the shoulder. He was carrying that burden before Jehovah and in the breastplate in the middle. Verse 11, an engraver should engrave the names of the sons of Israel on the two stones as he would engrave a seal. Mount the stones in gold settings and put the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the vest as stones calling to mind the sons of Israel. Ahuron is to carry their names before Jehovah on his two shoulders as a reminder. So once again, we're going to get into that where he's carrying the burden or the weight of the children or he's their representative before Jehovah. Verse 13, make gold square and two chains of pure gold, twisted like cords, and attach the cord-like chains to the squares. So that is what we're going to call this ifad or this uh, breastplate that would have these stones on the inside. Verse 15, make a breastplate for judging. Once again, this breastplate is where all of the children of Israel, the 12 names of the 12 tribes, of the 12 sons of Jacob were on those stones. It was for the purpose of judging. Have it crafted by a skilled artisan. Make it like the work of the ritual vest. Make it of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. And finely woven linen. When folded double, it has to be square. So they were going to make two parts and then open it up and that would make the vest. It would be connected across the shoulders with the stones, with chains of gold to the ends of this breastplate. On the breastplate, make two gold chains twisted like cords. Also for the breastplate, make two gold rings and put the gold rings on the two ends of the breastplate. Put the two twisted gold chains in the two rings at the two ends of the breastplate. So you see these rings here on the breastplate. The rings are right here on the top and on the bottom and they're connected to gold chains. I don't know what happened with my ink, but it messed up the color on this particular rendition. Mm. It goes on. Put the two, verse 24, put the two twisted gold chains and the two rings at the two ends of the breastplate. Attach the other two ends of the twisted chains to the front and shoulder pieces of the ritual vest. Make two gold rings and put them on the two ends of the breastplate at its edges on the side facing it toward the vest. Also make two gold rings and attach them low on the front. Remember we talked about the gold rings that are here on the top and at the bottom. Then bind the breastplate by its rings to the rings of the vest with a blue cord so that it can be on the vest decorated belt and so the breastplate won't swing loose from the vest. Verse 30. You ought to put the urm, urm and the in the breastplate for judging. So there was a pocket up under the breastplate that these two stones would be put there for the purpose of judging. Now, Moshe, when he didn't understand what to do, he would go in the tent of meeting and speak directly with Jehovah. But later, with the death of Moshe, now they were going to go and always run everything. The, the leader would run everything by the high priest who would have this, this outfit on. And inside that breastplate would be the stones 
that they would use to determine what Jehovah's instructions were. Thus, Ahuron will always have the means for making decisions for the people of Israel over his heart when he is in the presence of Jehovah. So the high priest would then go inside the holy place and find out what was going to be required of him. It goes on. You ought to make the robe for the ritual vest entirely of blue. We see that right here, entirely of blue. And you see the top of it up here. Around the opening is to be a broader woven like the neck of a coat of mail so that it won't tear. So that neck piece, because he had to put it on over his head, was reinforced by yarn. On its bottom hem, make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet. So on the hem of this robe would be bells of with pomegranate shells inside. The gold bell pomegranates all the way around the hem of the robe. Ahuron is to wear it when he ministers and its sound will be heard whenever he enters the holy place. Well, this was very important because when Ahuron was to go behind the curtain with the Ark of the Covenant, after consecrating himself and preparing himself to take the blood above the Ark of the Covenant behind the curtain, then those bells, they could hear them as he was moving about before the Ark of the Covenant. Because if he, if they did not hear those bells, then it could be consumed that something had happened. In other words, the sacrifice was not accepted. And so they would also tie a rope around his leg so that if that were to happen on the Day of Atonement and he went behind the curtain and he didn't come out, they could then pull him out because no one else was allowed to go back there behind the curtain but the high priest. You are to make an ornament of pure gold and engrave on it as a seal set apart for Jehovah. That was a gold bar kind of made of, around with the engraving on there set apart for Jehovah. And so Ahuron then is Jehovah is letting the people know that in his office, as he is walking around the courtyard and doing what he is doing and going behind the the, uh, into the holy place, as he is doing that, he has been set apart for Jehovah. So he is in a special, a special office. Verse 37, fasten it to the turban with a blue cord on the front of the turban over Ahuron's forehead because Ahuron bears the guilt for any errors committed by the people of Israel in consecrating their holy gifts. So now, those animals that were brought and given for sacrifice had to be without blemish and acceptable to Jehovah. And Ahuron and his sons were going to bear the responsibility for making certain that everything that Jehovah is saying was done in the order in which Jehovah had established. It goes on to say, Verse 39, you ought to weave the checker tunic of fine linen, make a turban of fine linen, and make a belt, the work of a weaver in colors. Likewise for Ahuron's son. Now that up to 39, that is for the high priest. Now for Ahuron's sons, make tunics, sashes, and heads gear expressing dignity and splendor. With them clothe your brother Ahuron and his sons. So we see in this rendering, the fine linen with a belt of sash around it, also with the turban on it, for which the priests were to operate in their office of 
priest or Kohen. Then anoint them, inaugurate them. So now we get into the, the time of consecration for them to participate in what is going on. But prior to this, Moshe is doing primarily the sacrificing of the animals and things for Jehovah. Now Aharon is going to take that on. Once they have completed their consecration, they will take on that responsibility and Moshe will step back. He says, also make for them, verse 42, linen shorts, reaching from waist to thigh to cover their bare flesh. So before they put the robes on, they would put these like short pants on of linen. Aaron and his sons are to wear them when they go into the tent of meeting and when they approach the altar to minister in the holy place so that they won't incur guilt and die. So now the consequences for not honoring what Jehovah has established could mean the death of that particular priest. And we are going to see that, unfortunately, for two of the sons of Aaron. This is to be a perpetual regulation, both for him and for his descendants. So that means this will be forever. Chapter 29, here's what you ought to do to consecrate them. So now Moshe is going to consecrate them for the ministry and teach them whatever Jehovah has put in his heart to teach them concerning their responsibility. Take one young bull and two rams without defect. Also matzah, unleavened bread. Cakes mixed with olive oil and matzah wafers spread with oil. All made from fine wheat flour. Put them together in a basket and present them in the basket along with the bull and the two rams. Now we're talking about the consecration ceremony that will take place for Ahuron and his sons. He has the four sons. Bring Aharon and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Take the garments and put on Aharon the tunic, the robe for the ritual vest, the vest itself, and the breastplate. Fasten the vest on him with its belt. Put the turban on his head and attach the holy ornament to the turban. Remember, set apart for Jehovah. Take, then take the anointing oil and anoint him by pouring it on his head. This is something that continually took place throughout the history of the children of Israel in terms of the anointing, even for kings. They would be anointed with the oil, and this oil will be discussed even in more detail in the book of Leviticus. Then take the anointing oil and anoint him by pouring it on his head. Verse 8, bring his sons, put tunics on them, wrap sashes around them, Aaron and his sons, and put the headgear on their heads. The office of Kohen, or priest, is to be theirs by a permanent regulation. You have to be a descendant of Aaron or his sons, a male descendant, in order to be fit for the office of Kohen. Thus you will consecrate Aharon and his sons. Bring the young bull to the front of the tent of meeting. Aharon and his sons are to lay their hands on the head on the bull's head. And you are to slaughter the bull in the presence of Jehovah at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Take some of the bull's blood and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger. Pour out all the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. This is for the first animals that will be sacrificed. And you see here in the courtyard, the altar. Quite different from what we call an altar in our churches today. For this was the place where the sacrifices were put in order to burn them before the tent of meeting. The laying on of heads is, is was significant, the bull's head in significance by saying the seriousness for what they were about to do. That men basically, in the condition they were in, deserved death. 
but there was sort of a transference, as you say, of the penalty for sin onto this animal. Then the animal was slaughtered and the blood was then put on the horns of the altar with the finger and then pour out all the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Verse 13, take all the fat that covers the inner organs, the covering of the liver, the kidneys with their fat and offer them up in smoke on the altar. So in many sacrifices, other than a complete burnt offering, which we will learn about in the book of Leviticus, it was the organs and the fat that were burned on the altar. The other parts were basically kind of roasted for the eating of the priests. But the bull's flesh, skin, and dung you ought to destroy by fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. So we see then the transference of this sin into the animal and then this part of the animal, the flesh, the skin, and dung were destroyed by fire in another location outside and away from the tabernacle. Take one of the rams, that's the bull. Aharon and his sons are to lay their hands on the ram's head. You are to slaughter the ram, take its blood, and splash it on all sides of the altar. Water the ram in four parts, wash the inner organs and lower parts of the legs, and put them with the quarters and the head. Then offer up the whole ram and smoke on the altar. It is a burnt offering. But that offering, once again, the entire insides of the animal were burned up on the altar. It is a burnt offering for Jehovah, a pleasing aroma, an offering made to Jehovah by fire. Take the other ram. Now we talked, it was two rams and a bull. Take the other ram. I'm running his son out of later hands on the ram's head. You ought to slaughter the ram. Take some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Ahuron's ear. So now this particular animal, they're going to take some of the blood and put it on the right ear, symbolic of making certain that they would always listen for the word of Jehovah. On the lobes of his son's right ears, you will place this blood. On the thumbs of their right hands. On the thumbs of their right hands, were designed for the work of the ministry because the work is done with the hands and on the big toes of their right feet for they were to walk worthy of the call. The very same thing we studied in terms of what Shaul is telling the believers and the Messianic believers referring to this now is that we are the tabernacles for the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the very presence of Jehovah, and we are to walk worthy of our call. So that is the same thing that is symbolically being done in this inauguration of a priesthood. Take the rest of the blood and splash it on all sides of the altar. Then take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron in his clothing and on his sons and the clothing of his sons with him so that he and his clothing will be consecrated and with him, his sons, and his sons' clothing. Also take the fat from the ram, the fat tail, the fat that covers the inner organs, the two kidneys, the fat covering them, and the right thigh, for it is a ram of consecration, along with one loaf of bread, one cake of oiled bread, and one wafer from that basket that was brought before of masa, which was brought before the altar, which is before Jehovah, and put it all in the hands of Aharon and his son. Now, this is called a wave offering. They are to wave them as a wave offering in the presence of Jehovah. Then take them back and burn them up in smoke on the altar on top of the burnt offering. To be a pleasing aroma before Jehovah, it is an offering made by fire to Jehovah. So now this part that they have waved that right thigh, 
and those organs. All that is waved before the altar, and now they're going to put it back on the altar and burn it up. Verse 26. Take the breastplate. I'm sorry, the breast of the ram for Aharon's consecration and wave it as a wave offering before Jehovah. It will be your share. So now Moshe is going to take this part and wave it before the altar and this is going to be his share. Consecrate the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of any contribution that has been waved and raised up, whether from the ram of consecration or from anything else meant for Aharon and his sons. So from the in the future, now Aharon will wave certain parts of the animal before Jehovah, the organs and the fat around the organs and certain parts of the animal are burned up completely. The rest of the animal will be used as food, but it's especially holy food for Aharon and his sons. This will belong to Aharon and his sons as their share perpetually do from the people of Israel. So when you bought an offering, if it was not going to be a kind of a sin offering that was burned up completely, part of it would go to the priest to be eaten by them. Certain offerings would then have the rest of the animal given to the people to, in fact, eat themselves. So none was to be wasted. It will be a contribution from people of Israel for their peace offerings and their contribution to Jehovah. So when they were bringing certain peace offerings or you wanted to have favor before Jehovah and you brought an offering, then part of that meat would be waved and burned. Part of it would be waved and eaten by the priest and the other part would be given to the people who eat themselves. The holy garments, verse 29 of Aaron, will be used by his sons after him. They will be anointed and consecrated in them. So those, this outfit for Aaron, this priestly garment, was only for the high priest and the one who would then become high priest at the death of Aaron, in this case, or any of the high priests. The son who becomes Kohen in his place, who comes into the tent of meeting to serve in the holy place, is to wear them for seven days. So any one that becomes the high priest, there is a seven-day consecration for them. Take the ram of consecration and boil its meat in a holy place. Aharon and his sons will eat the ram's meat and the bread in the basket at the entrance to the tent of meeting. They are to eat the things with which atonement was made for them to inaugurate and consecrate them. No one else may eat this food because it is holy. If any of the meat for the consecration or any of the bread remains until morning, burn up what remains. It is not to be eaten because it is holy. Carry out all these orders I have given you concerning Ahuron and his sons. You are to spend seven days consecrating them. So Moshe is going to do the same thing for seven days. And they are watching these sacrifices and seeing how Moshe is doing it because they will in turn have to take over once the consecration has been completed. Each day offer a young bull as a sin offering beside the other offerings of atonement. Offer the sin offering on the altar as your atonement for it then anoint it to consecrate it. Seven days you will make atonement on the altar and consecrate it. Thus the altar will be especially holy or set apart and whatever touches the altar will become holy. So they're going to consecrate every all of the items that have been built and the altar for which the sacrifices will be made. Verse 38. Now, this is what you are to offer on the altar, two lambs a year old regularly every day. So every day, two, two lambs a year old, one for the morning sacrifice and one for the evening sacrifice. The one lamb you are to offer in the morning and the other lamb at dusk with 
the one lamb offered two quarts of finely ground flour mixed with one quart of oil from pressed olives, along with one quart of wine as a drink offering. Now these pressed olive oil, the first and the best oil that was made from this pressing of the olives was used to light the menorah. Other oil is then used for these parts of the ceremonies. Verse 41, the other lamb you are to offer at dusk. Do with it as with the morning grain and drink offerings. It will be a pleasing aroma, an offering made by to Jehovah by fire. Through all your generations, this is to be the regular burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting before Jehovah. There is where I will meet with you to speak with you. So the people understood what Moshe is relaying to them, as we see here, how they would go up this ramp to put the sacrifice on this, I guess we would say, a grill inside of this altar. We see the ram's horns coming out the ends and the rocks and stuff that were made for the ramp that would get the priest so that he could reach over there and burn the sacrifice. And then they could move, remove a place and take the ashes and different things from up under this altar from which the sacrifice was made. There, verse 43, I will meet with the people of Israel and the place will be consecrated by my glory. So after all of this consecration, now the place is ready for the Shekinah glory or the very presence of Jehovah to be filled in this place. He says, I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. Likewise, I will consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve me in the office of Kohen or priest. Then I will live with the people of Israel and be their Elohim. This is an exciting thing to kind of understand where the creator of the universe says that in this place, do it as I tell you. And at this place, I will meet with you. And then everyone will know, all people will know that you are my people and I am your Elohim. They will know that I am Jehovah, their Elohim, who brought them out of the land of Egypt in order to live with them. I am Jehovah, their Elohim. And so once again, Shaul is explaining and using this imagery and understanding to explain that we are the temples of the Ruach HaKodesh that the Holy Spirit has come to dwell in. And so we are to use this symbolism in our understanding of who we are and whose we are. And so some of the things that we do I feel like if we understood more what was going on here, then we would understand better how we are to conduct ourselves. Remember the people were even told that Jehovah was coming to the top of Mount Sinai to speak with them. And they were to what? Clean themselves up, abstain from sexual relations with their wives and prepare themselves for meeting with Jehovah. So we are to guard our temples. And so all of the things we do to these temples is, is fascinating that we don't really understand that what Shaul is telling us that we are the temple, believers are the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh. So I don't think we should put all this graffiti or tattoos and all these things on this temple because we are supposed to look a certain way. So that way is not the way the world do things because those tattoos were always symbolic of false deities and other crazy things that people would do with their bodies in order to worship false deities. But yet and still we do the same things with our bodies as if we're not the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we conclude our 
lesson with chapter 30, and we talk about the altar of incense for which I have given us a rendering here of the altar of incense and the container that would hold the incense. And what I want to make sure that we understand is on the Day of Atonement, which we will specifically get into in the book of Leviticus, on the Day of Atonement, when the high priest would go behind the curtain, he would take extra incense and put that in this container that would hold the incense. This is what the sons of Ahuron would be holding. And what the incense would be burned in this container that we see down here. It's important that on the Day of Atonement, it would be additional so that when the high priest went behind the curtain, he would pay, place the incense that was burning, extremely a lot of incense burning, so that the room behind the curtain would be full of the smoke from the incense so that the priest would not burn up he would feel with the presence of Jehovah. So incense, and in Revelation, it talked about this incense is what? The prayers of the saints that go before the altar. He goes on and says, you ought to make an altar on which to burn incense. Make it of acacia wood. It is to be 18 inches square and three feet high. Its horns ought to be one with, of one piece with it. Overlay it with pure gold. You see the horns on the altar. Overlay it with pure gold. It's top all around its sides and its horns. And put around it a molding of gold. We see that molding here going around the top of the altar. Make two gold rings for it under its molding at the two corners on both sides. This is where the carrying poles will go. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Place it in front of the curtain by the ark for the testimony. In front of the ark cover that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. So you're going to place this on one side of the altar, on the same side as the showbread will be the table, the uh, altar of incense. Ahuron will burn fragrant incense on it as a pleasing aroma every morning. He is to burn it when he prepares the lamps. Ahuron is also to burn it when he lights the lamps at dusk. This is the regular burning of incense before Jehovah through all your generations. You are not to offer unauthorized incense on it or a burnt offering or a grain offering and you are not to pour a drink offering on it. So you do exactly as Jehovah has instructed. You are not to offer unauthorized incense on it. Aharon is to make atonement on its horns once a year with the blood of the sin offering. That is on the day of atonement. Of the sin offering of atonement, <clears throat> He is to make atonement for it once a year through all your generations. It is especially holy to Jehovah. And so we see then that the final piece of furniture is this altar for incense. So now we have all of the furnishings for the holy place and only behind the curtain, uh, which is the holy of holies, will be the ark of the covenant. And that will conclude our lesson. That concludes our lesson. So let me get out of our shared space. I want to thank you so much for joining me tonight. And each time we go through this, I, I get excited because so much of this we can understand as we're studying the various letter that Shaul wrote to the Ephesians and the Galatians and the Corinthians. In those letters, Paul is using these symbolisms to explain what Yeshua, our uh, Hamashiach or our Messiah, 
has done. And so by understanding this section of the Torah more, we can then appreciate and understand more what Shaul is trying to explain to both Messianic believers and non-Jewish believers in Yeshua as to what is actually the symbolism behind what Yeshua has done for us. And so with this, remember we believe that Yeshua upon his death on the cross then took his blood before the heavenly tabernacle presented it before the father it was accepted of the father and the father told him to now sit here at my right hand till i make your enemies your footstool so all of those who don't believe in who you are will pay a price for that non-belief because he paid the price for our sins as in hebrews it explains to us that the blood of bulls and goats did not take away our sins. It just demonstrated the severity of the sins. And by being obedient, your obedience means there was forgiveness. But the taking away of the sin and making us vessels that can be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit required the blood of Yeshua our Messiah. With that, let me say uh, a priestly, the priestly blessing that is found in Numbers chapter 6, and it reads, Jehovah, may Jehovah bless you and keep you. May Jehovah make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Jehovah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And with that, I will see you on Wednesday night for our Wednesday night Bible study. We will be in the book of Ephesians chapter five. So with that, thank you for joining me and shalom.